Welcome to Presidents and Palaces, East Africa. In this journey, we'll delve into the rich political history of the region and explore the magnificent state houses that have played host to its leaders for decades. To understand the present, we must first journey into the past. East Africa's history is marked by colonialism and the hard-fought battles for independence. Let's start our exploration with a quick overview of the countries that make up this diverse region, each with its unique story to tell. Our journey wouldn't be complete without showcasing some of the most impressive state houses across East and Central Africa, and how much was sank in during construction. South Sudan. The official residence of the President of the Republic of South Sudan is called the State House, J1, and is located in the South Sudan capital of Juba. The construction of J1 was commissioned by Solva Kiir in 2022, and little information about the progress is in public domain. The construction of the new State House raised mixed reactions, as many South Sudanese still believe that the former State House was still in good shape to serve the purpose. Rwanda. There is indeed scanty information about the home of the President of Rwanda where President Paul Kagame hosts his meetings and receives guests. However, this is what we have been able to find out. The State House, also known as Uruguayro, is the official residence of the President of Rwanda and a symbol of governance in the country and the place where the President receives and entertains guests. The complex is located in the Kasiru area of Rwanda's capital Kigali and was originally built to accommodate the 6th Franco-African Summit in May 1979, Congo. The Palais de la Nation, also known as the Palace of the Nation, serves as the official residence and primary workplace of the President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Located strategically in Gom, north of Kinshasa, adjacent to the Congo River, this iconic building has played a significant role in the country's history since its construction. It was built in 1956, based on Marcel Lambrich's design, initially conceived as the residence for the colonial governor-general during the Belgian colonial era. However, following the Democratic Republic of Congo's independence from Belgium in 1960, the Palais transformed into a symbol of the new state. Notable events, including the proclamation of independence and speeches denouncing colonialism, took place here on June 30, 1960. While the exact construction cost is not readily available, it has held its role as the presidential residence and workplace since 2001, following the assassination of Laurent Desire Kabila, and continues to be a significant political and historical landmark in the country. It is however not known how much was spent during the construction of the Palace of the Nation, Tanzania. Ikulu is the official residence of the President of Tanzania, located in Dar es Salaam. It was established in 1865 by Majid bin Said of Zanzibar. This remarkable state house combines African and Arabian architectural influences, featuring expansive verandas and covered walkways. The building is characterized by its white walls, African terrazzo floors, and a commanding presence within its 33-acre grounds overlooking the Indian Ocean to the east and Dar es Salaam to the west. The entrance boasts brass-studded doors with a replica of the Republic's coat of arms and two prominent drums. Notably, the State House houses various gifts from state visitors, including an Ethiopian shield presented by Emperor Hail Selassie and a representation of the coat of arms of the Republic of Tanganyika, gifted by the Government of India in 1961, which serves as a backdrop in the President's Council Chamber. Ikulu is estimated to have cost about $12 million during its construction. Kenya. Moving over to Kenya, the stately state house in Nairobi is a witness to the nation's history. Originally built during the colonial era, it underwent extensive renovations during President Daniel Arap Moy's time in office, costing approximately $15 million. State House, originally known as Government House, is the official residence of the President of Kenya. It has a rich history, initially serving as the residence of the Prime Minister after Kenya's independence in 1963. However, on December 12, 1964, Kenya became a republic, and with the abolition of the Prime Minister's position, it became the official residence of the President. Constructed in 1907 in Nairobi, it was originally designed as the official residence of the Governor of British East Africa during Kenya's colonial era within the British Empire. The building was the hub for the governor's official functions, 
while also serving as a place for relaxation and retreat. Post-independence, Government House was renamed State House. Although it retained its status as the official residence of the head of state, it primarily functioned as an administrative office. Presidents since independence, such as Mzee Jomo Kenyatta and President Moi, often preferred private residences over State House for their accommodation, with State House mainly used for official functions and hosting visiting dignitaries. Uganda Just next door in Uganda, the State House in Entebbe serves as the presidential residence. It underwent significant renovations during President Yoweri Museveni's regime, with an estimated cost of $20 million. In Uganda, State House refers to the official residence of the President of Uganda. The main State House is situated at Entebbe, 40 kilometers south of Kampala, capital of Uganda. The second State House is at Nokasero in Kampala. The State House Entebbe has undergone significant renovations during President Yoweri Museveni's regime with an estimation cost of $20 million. Much not so much information about the State House is in public domain, it is one of the best presidential home in East Africa. Burundi. Very little information is known about the home of the President of Burundi, but we can tell you is that the Presidential Palace as it is called is located in the Bujumbura capital and was inaugurated in 2019 by the government of Burundi. The palace was built by the Chinese, and it is estimated that hooping $22 million was spent to construct this symbol of friendship and cooperation between the government of China and Burundi. These leaders have faced a myriad of challenges during their time in office, from economic hurdles to political reforms. Yet, they've also achieved remarkable milestones that have shaped the region. As we wrap up our journey through East and Central Africa's political landscape, remember that these leaders and their state houses continue to play pivotal roles in shaping the destiny of their nations. Thank you for joining us on this captivating expedition. We hope you've gained valuable insights into the region's leaders, the iconic state houses that adorn their countries, and the financial investments behind them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more enlightening content about our world's diverse regions.